Hello and welcome to our video on plant structure and function. Um, today we will talk about the structure and function of roots, stems, and leaves. And finally we'll have a brief discussion on tropisms. So today we'll start our discussion on plant structures with roots. Now the roots provide an important part for the plant. They anchor them into the ground. They get water up from the soil. They also get nutrients from the soil. And then it uses the vascular tissues to transport that materials to the other parts of the cell. We have two different kinds of root systems that I want you to be familiar with. There's multiple variations on these. Um, the big ones are going to be this taproot system like here where we'd see like what we would expect a carrot to be looking like. But it doesn't have to be swollen like a carrot is. It could be just a normal single solitary root where it just kind of branches off like that. Now the opposite of this one is going to be a fibrous root system where you can see it's just this group, this tangled web of roots. And we can see another example of it down here as well where we can see how it's just going to be these variations. So you'll either have one solitary root coming down and it'll branch off or you'll just have this fibrous network that's going to be out there. Now when we talk about roots, there's a couple parts you want to know. We do have the root tip here, and that's where it grows. So it'll actually, this region of elongation is going to be here in the root tip. And then below that, we have the root cap. And the root cap is going to be kind of like cells that are a little more tough. They're a little more durable. And as it grows in this region of elongation in the root tip, it'll push this root cap through the ground or through the rocks or whatever. That's how it makes space for the roots to grow. And we talked about how the nutrients and things will be coming in. Those will come in through root hairs primarily. And we can see it going on here. And then if we look, we have our xylem and our phloem here. So the phloem will bring us energy and things like that down to the root tip. And the xylem is where we'll transport the water upwards. So we can kind of see how the roots work and what they're doing here. And basically, remember, they're the anchor, but they also are how they get a lot of their nutrients and their water in plants. Okay, as we move up the plant, we get to the stems, and the stem serves a primary purpose. What it's supposed to do is, if we remember, we had the roots down here, which basically get nutrients and water, and then we have the leaf, which is the most important part, because that's where photosynthesis happens, and the stem quite simply holds the leaf up so it can get a little bit more sunlight. Now, there are two basic types of stems. We have a herbaceous stem, and we have a woody stem. The herbaceous stem is going to be primarily green in color is what we'll notice. They're flexible. Um, these are going to be in plants that grow an awful lot faster um, or just grow for a single season. And that's simply it's as quick as it can get the job done. Throw up the leaf, let it photosynthesize, and be done with it. The woody stems tend to be a little bit more durable. And this is like what we would see in a tree or something like that that's going to spend multiple years growing and getting larger and larger and larger and it's able to support more weight so these will be a lot taller but also it'll survive a longer period of time so remember the stem the only portion that the stem does is it's basically trying to get the leaf up off the ground so that you can expose it to more sunlight and that brings us to the leaves of the plant and the leaves are probably the most important part of the plant especially for us and it's in the leaves where we have photosynthesis occurring so what we're talking about when we talk about the leaf is you have the blade over here, which is the main part of it. You can see that it'll have this like stalk here that'll come out, a midrib, and then these veins that come off. And this is where our vascular tissues are going to run and such like that. Now, if we take a cross section of the leaf, you'll notice that it has this epidermis here and here, and that's going to be protection. It's going to provide a little bit of protection for the leaf to make sure that it, the important things are being taken care of inside. The inside part is the mesophyll here, and you'll notice that there's a little bit of gaps and spaces here in between the cells, and that allows gas exchange with the, through the stoma. So the, on the bottom side of a leaf is where you'll see these stoma, these openings, and that'll allow gas exchange to occur. And it's in here where we start to see this photosynthesis occurring, and you'll notice that we have our vascular bundle here, so water will be transported up through the xylem, and then this energy and the sugars and things will be passed down through the phloem to the rest of the plant. So the leaves are basically why we have the plant. That's what happens for the photosynthesis. And I just wanted you to see that there's a bunch of different kinds of leaf patterns that are out there in nature. Okay, so that's it for the root stems and leaves. And I wanted to conclude our talk with a little talk about tropisms. 
Now, when we talked about what it takes to be alive, we said that you have to respond to a stimulus. And in plants, we don't really see this a lot. It's not like you can walk up to a plant and go, boo, and it'll run away. So it does react to a stimulus, and depending on what the stimulus is, that's what we call this reaction. The reactions in plants are what we call tropisms. So the easiest one and the most obvious one is going to be a phototropism. And that means that basically, notice that the plant's stem is growing towards a light source because the stem's purpose is to get the leaves closer to the light. So if you have a plant and you have a window and the plant's not quite centered in the window, it's off to the side, you'll see that the plant will kind of lean towards like we see here and it'll actually grow towards the light. Now, there's a response to gravity called gravitropism. And what that's going to be is that our plant's stem, once again, is going to grow away from the pull of gravity. So if I had a pot and I knocked it over, what you'll notice is that that plant's going to try and reach up to the sky. And remember, the stem is doing this, and the reason for it is, is it wants to get these leaves up and into as much light as possible. So gravitropism is when it reacts to gravity. Okay. Next up, we have thigmatropism, and that's going to be towards touch. And this will be primarily in vines we'll see, where you'll see the plant grow out and it'll have a little curly here. And as soon as that gets onto something, that's that curly part will grow around. So it's a response to touch. There are also plants that will actually react to a touch, and that would be a different type of thigmatropism, something like a Venus flytrap. So when a fly lands inside of it, and triggers a little hair, it'll close up its leaves and then it'll secrete out a digestive enzymes and that's how it'll get some of its nutrients. And then the last one is this hydrotropism and that one's basically going to affect the roots of a plant and that's where the roots are gonna find water. So it'll send out a bunch of different roots. So if we have our tree over here and a bunch of roots have been sent out everywhere and it finds water over here, then what the plant will do is it'll send more roots to where it finds that water so that it's able to get enough water for the plant to live. Okay, so that's it for our video today. Um, good luck with the lessons as always, and we will see you in the next video.